So we're gonna wait just a minute. I don't know why. I, this was just a hymn that I had, um, but they they did shut down my last one. So I'm gonna wait a minute to see if people are able to come back on and then we'll get started. For those of you that are watching this in the recording, uh, I encourage you to go and listen to some version of Take My Life and Let It Be. It doesn't matter what version, there's all different kinds, um, but it will go well with today's devotion, which comes from Luke, <clears throat> specifically. We're looking at Luke 1, verse 34. So, uh, you never know. I, I honestly last minute changed my hymn because I thought I thought the other one was going to was gonna boot me off, but I was wrong. It was this one. So <laughs> you just never know. So let me wait a minute and then we'll get started. My apologies. Who can say which song will do it? Good morning, Barbara and Ingrid. It's good to have you back, holding you both in prayer, and Janet and Michelle praying for you today. I'm glad you're with us. Good morning, Celia and Lisa. It's good to have you here, praying for you today. And good morning. I'll just wait a couple more minutes. I think I got Gail. Maybe I didn't. Well, if I didn't, good morning, Gail. I'm glad you're with us. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did, though. So as people are coming on, uh, we're looking at Luke 1, verse 34. Luke 1, verse 34. And the title, the word for today is virgin. Virgin. So we're going to be looking at uh, kind of what we looked at on Sunday in worship. So, well, I'm going to just get started. So, Luke 1, 34. Uh, oh, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Cindy Stauffer. I'm blessed to serve as the pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. And we are on the corner of George and Liberty. Our building is in the heart of the city of New Brunswick. And I'm glad you're with us today. So, welcome, welcome. Okay. So, let's take a look. Luke 1, 34 says, How will this be? Mary asked the angel, Since I am a virgin. How will this be since I am a virgin? And uh, this comes from Honest Advent, uh, a book by uh, Scott Erickson. So, he says, Throughout our lives, we will encounter paradox. Two seemingly contradictory truths existing in the same space and time. Like a catch-22 where someone needs something that can only be had by not needing it. Or the omnipotence paradox which asks whether an all-powerful being can create a rock too heavy for itself to lift. Or the favorite from all college graduates who can't get a job because their lack of real work experience. But how are you supposed to get real work experience if you can't get a job? This is the postgraduate mystery they never tell you about in your university philosophy class. At the heart of the Christ story is a mystery. The paradox is Jesus being fully God and fully human. Two seemingly contradictory truths existing in the same space and time. This is a mystery that continues to capture hearts and minds of millions of pilgrims throughout the world. Yet that mystery was birthed out of another paradoxical mystery, one where the finite and infinite wove together salvation in the belly of a Middle Eastern young woman. Why I think that writing about 
the virgin birth is beyond my pay grade is because this part of the Christian tradition will remain a mystery and may never be fully explained. And that's okay. Because the function of a paradox is not to find the solution to seemingly opposing truths, but to be transformed by living in the middle mystery of them. Your transformation throughout life will be a paradox. One truth is that you have agency to make decisions to change and transform the parts of yourself that you wish. The choice is to do daily sit-ups and refrain from cookies and cream milkshakes. I'm sorry, the choice to do daily sit-ups and refrain from cookies and cream milkshakes will create a transformation in your abdominal area. Gratitude and thankfulness are choices you can make to transform your perspective in every situation you find yourself in. You have a choice in transformation. And yet, there are other parts of your transformation that are like the virginal birth, the virgin birth, in the way that you are not in charge of any of it. It's less about your mustering up the strength to accomplish something and more about being open to the transformation that God wants to do in you. It begins quietly and deeply within you. A divine inception in the deepest place where your truest birth, truest life is birthed. Surely you have experienced this unanticipated change, like a nagging knowing that it's time to move from your comfortable situation or a desire to try that thing that scares you the most or that unexpected longing for prayer or the revelatory conclusion that the best way forward is to be kinder to your weaknesses or a persistent invitation to forgive someone you feel hurt by. This is the place where the divine begins new life and the newness of life is what we all desire. This is the work of the Spirit, that the Spirit began in Mary. And this is the work the Spirit is wanting to do in the soul womb of humanity, to bring Christ's participation into fullness with you, to bring you into the fullness of the participatory life of Christ for nothing will be impossible with God was the Mary that was the answer Mary received from the messenger when inquiring about the mystery of how this could happen and I believe we get the same answer about the mysterious transformation of our own lives most of us will not have an angel announce those words to us but I do think all of us can whisper the statement that the divine is looking for to do deep transformation and restoration within us. Let it be to me according to your word. May all your impossibilities be the very starting point for the divine possibility. Um, so this was a little long, but um, I wanted to, I, I, I do really appreciate, um, I think there's a tendency in all of us to be so caught up in information, so caught up in why this happens. If I could just get the answer to faith, how did Mary get, um, become uh, preg pregnant uh, when she was a virgin? Like, if I can know that, then I can have faith. If I can know, you know, all the mysteries of the world, if I can know how Christ is present within the, the communion meal, specifically, 
Don't give me the mystery. I want specifics. If I can know, then I can believe, you know, and, and it was the same with Thomas. Thomas, if I can, if I can touch where the nail went through the hand of Jesus and I see that he's alive, then I will have faith. Then I will believe. I think that is the tendency for all of us. Seeing is believing. And yet we also know that it isn't. Sometimes we can see something right in front of us and it does not cause us to believe. So whenever I'm doing Bible study, um, and I, usually if I'm doing disciple, but any Bible study, we'll talk about, it's not about information. If you came for information, it's not about information. You could get all the information in the world and you might never believe. We study God's word that it might transform us. It's about transformation, studying God's word, being engaged in prayer, worshiping together. All of these are, we don't come to church to get information. We don't come to Bible study or to, or we don't open God's word for information. There's plenty of information in the world it's all around us. The question for us is how are we allowing God's word, our times of worship, our encounters in prayer to transform us? And we can do some of that transformation ourselves, but the mystery is how God is able to transform us when we are open when we are open to the Spirit's leading. So today, my friends, how are you coming to God's Word? Maybe you're going to come to Bible study tonight. Shannon will not be with us. She's sick. We're all in her in prayer, but Vivian will be leading our Bible study tonight. Maybe it's that, coming with an openness for God to transform your life. Or maybe it's your times of worship this Advent. How might the incarnate love of Christ come down to you again, transforming your heart and mind, opening you up to possibility in what may seem impossible this day? Where is God bringing transformation in your life? Let us pray. God, we come before you today acknowledging that too often we dwell in the impossible, feeling like nothing could ever change, feeling stuck, unable to see anything new, anything, any promise in the future ahead. And then we hear the words in today's story we are reminded once again that you are making a way when it seems there is no way. And so help us this day, Lord, to live into this mystery. Even when we don't have the 